Welcome back to the Cross Reference. I'm Joe Shrew, and it has been a minute. But I tell you what, the world outside has not stopped as I haven't been on here in a while. And I've been meaning to get back on here, and I've been itching to get back on here to talk to you guys and let's get into the Word of God, look at the world around us, and just and, and discuss it. Because that's what we're here for, right? Um, but uh, until we do... Yeah, it's been since February. I do apologize, but we're back, and we got a lot to talk about. It's heating up out there, not just summer-wise, but let's let's just say the enemy's hard at work doing his destruction all across the world. And um, before we get started, if uh, if you haven't already subscribed, go go ahead and hit that subscribe button, and and hit the notification bell, so when new stuff comes out, you know. Hopefully. You got the notification right before this came on. I know you haven't gotten many notifications lately. Like I said, we're back though. We are back here at the Cross Reference. And, and, and like and share, especially this one. Let's get it out there. Let's get, that, let's get the Word of God out there flowing in a kind of sort of different type of way because you know how we do here at the Cross Reference. But anyways, um, here in studio, we have a guest, and his name is Eric Walker. Say hello to Eric. What's going on, y'all? And Eric Walker has a, uh, he's, he's a, a devout man of God, and we, uh, he has a YouTube channel called Disciples Heart. Um, tell us about Disciples Heart, man. Oh, wow. Yeah, it started out uh, seven, seven years ago. I had the idea that I needed to start recording what the Father was sharing with me according to what the Word says to follow Yeshua, to follow the King of Kings, and actually put it into practice. So, I've been recording what he's been sharing with me, uh, current events too, and going back to the scriptures and then put it into practice. Right, and I've, I, I've skimmed through there, man, and like yep. I've seen you actually yep. out on the streets. Yeah. With your with your roll along, uh, roll along little PA system with your mic in the, in, yep. in in your yep. hand and just preaching yep. the word of God, the kingdom coming, the you know. Yeah. What's the message you usually give when you when you're it's that, that you find God putting on your heart? Yeah, it's repent and turn. It's uh, come back to the Father, come back to the original uh, message. We're called to repent, turn away from this world, and back to the Savior to follow Him uh, all the way back to heaven and call as many as we can while we're out there. Cool. Hey, man, thank you for coming in today. Yep. Um, it's been a long time coming. I know we've been trying to get this together for a little bit now. Yeah, it's been a bit, yeah. And and I, I, like I told you, I'll probably be out there with you soon. Right on. Uh, Ready? With a microphone, either with a camera in my hand, you know. Yeah, let's do it. Helping you out with your channel or 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 a microphone too. But give me that, you know. Yeah, like, yeah. I got something I want to say. It's, it's, it's tag team to go out two by two, so. Right on. Really cool. Yeah. Um, guys, um, like I said, there's a lot been going on since February. Yeah. Yes, just since February. I mean, we may be going to World War Three for all we know. It's mm. just getting crazy out there. But something I really want to talk about that's on my heart lately um, is uh, this Roe versus Wade thing, man. What do you What do you think about this? Oh I'll, man, I'll, <laughs> <laughs> don't get me started on that. No, well, actually, that's why we're here. Uh, yeah <laughs> it's uh it's bizarre to uh say the least but it's straight out of the word uh it says that uh people are going to get worse and worse they're going to deceive and uh, be de be deceived and deceive others and so what else are they going to do but what they think is right so here we go it's uh they're just they're doing what like we were talking about uh had a quick conversation a few days ago about it you were just letting me know about everything that's going on and I'm, I'm doing my best to keep my eye on it too and how it's just like a, a, a child who has been given what they want and because the law has been passed that they can have that and so 
And then you take it away. You take it away, and they're going to throw a fit. And you see a little temper tantrum. Yeah, yeah. Like what we're talking about. If you don't know, then you've been in a you've been in a shell. But hey, that that's that's why we're here. Uh, the Supreme Court has voted to overturn abortion rights. This draft opinion showed. Um, and in quotes, it says, we hold that Roe and Casey must be overruled. Justice Alito writes in an initial majority draft circulated inside the court. Now, this got leaked. That, mm-hmm. first of all, that is, that is, that in itself is just kind of a, a scary thing. This hasn't ever happened. Like, we're leaking Supreme Court rulings before they come out. And, I mean, come on, man. It, it, we got an election coming up. Yeah. I mean, why else would they do that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's all timed. Got to get. I know, right? Got to get everybody yeah. in a in a in a like you said. Get them in a temper tantrum. It's like taking a toy away from a child. You've let them play. What you've you yeah. know. It's time to put that up now. It's time to quit killing your babies. It's time to quit killing children and sacrificing your children yeah. to Molech. Yeah, even though you've been given the opportunity to do that for what since seventy three. So. Oh Lord, forgive us. Yeah, I mean, honestly, when I hmm. again repent, we got to turn back, and most people aren't going to want to. So when I think about it, honestly, yeah. Eric, mm-hmm. I, it's just it's amazing. I I don't know if you've seen uh, one of the videos I did a, a while back, but you actually have like the the Church of Satan in Austin yeah. or Houston or whatever right. yeah. talking about they want to sue um, Texas because. They're infringing on their First Amendment rights, their their freedom of religion, because sacrifice mm, yeah, like, of children like they can do that, yeah. is a ritual. Mm. And th- th- they're like, you know, I covered that, and I'm just like, you've got to be kidding me. Because Texas went with a, sick, with, a, with a heartbeat bill. They have those freedoms, but the children don't, so. Right. You know, they should be given those same rights. But, you know, as, an, as adults, we get those rights, but... Uh, they're given because of the religion the right to take a child's life, but it's against the laws of the land. So, it's murder. So, yeah. What do you say to you know d- 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 not to get off topic a little yeah. bit? But what do you say to somebody who who says, you know, it's my body, mm-hmm. it's my choice. Right. You know. Well, they don't know that their body belongs to God, was given by God, and as disciples is. Believers, and when we're reborn, we have the understanding. They don't have that understanding. So they're going to think they can do with their body because it really it, they think it still belongs to them. So they're going to do what they want, and like a little child who doesn't understand, they're going to still want what they want their way. That is, again, it's straight out of Second Timothy 2, which we'll continue to get back into. It's They're going to want their way. Selfish lovers of self, what they want, not knowing, not caring about the, the child, another another person's life a child well that's just it they don't see it as life right until yeah. they take their first breath because they've been told year after year that it's not life it's a fetus and i've heard others brothers say this that it you know uh, referencing ray comfort he's the first person i heard say that that uh it literally means little child a fetus means a little child so you're yeah. trying to call it something else as an excuse. Yeah, and a lot of people yeah. get a lot of people get this twisted. I mean, and not to get too far into the weeds on politics, but yeah. this is this doesn't mean uh, there's there's a ban all across the board of abortion. I wish there were, me yeah. personally, but that's not what this means. This mm-hmm. means that they're going to kick it back down to the states for everybody for states to deal with it how they see fit. Now there are like 22 states that that have a a trigger law in effect that if it gets overturned immediately said states will abandon abortion. Mm. But, um, anyways, like you were saying, it's kind of like, uh, it's kind of like a, um, huh. a child getting all it's having something and taking it away. And they're starting to protest at churches. Mm-hmm. They're starting to go to churches and well, let, let's, 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 uh, let's go over here and let's go to Twitter. And this is from, um, free, uh, uh, freenews.tv hmm. and guys if you have children in the room ha- have them step out for a minute but this has to be played and and um, you'll see why but if you have children in the room have them leave the room there's some uh, some graphic imaging and and some language but we have to address this we we have we have to look. We can't shut our eyes with scales over our eyes and not not see what's going on in the world outside, especially as it pertains to the church. This is uh, taking place in a church right outside New York City. Let's take a look.
your reactions on that, man. Yeah, that's flat out blasphemy, man. Uh, it's it's basically saying we can do what we want, and you can't stop us. And that's exactly what the scriptures say is going to happen. We're seeing it unfold on a day to day basis. First thing that came to mind was Revelation. It's eighteen. Could be wrong on that exact reference, but it is literally says that they will continue to get worse and worse. Now I'm kind of skipping on that. So you want to um, go ahead? That man. Um, what's that Revelation? Uh, but yes, the hearts of men will grow colder and colder. Yeah. Um, I, th- I want to say that's Timothy. I, I want to say it's First or Second Timothy, where yeah. it's talking about in the end times and the latter days, men's you know, and it also speaks about uh, yeah. information like 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 we're doing right now. We're pulling up stuff as we as we want to talk about it. We're just pulling yeah. it up. Yep. I mean, information's running rampant. Um, people will be blasphemers, haters of good, lovers of, of evil, yeah. disobeying parents is actually yep. in there. <laughs> Children. And I know they're not in the room. And I hope yeah. they're not in the room after that video we just played. Yeah. Man, when I was and I'm not and I'm not exaggerating. Mm-hmm. Um, when I was doing show prep for this, mm-hmm. I just almost started crying, dude. Yeah. I don't I don't It's very grievous, yep. Um, oh, crap. Let's see. Uh, that didn't have any audio on it. I just realized that that had no audio on it well, because okay. I had the wrong thing. But, uh, so we're going to do some editing now. So. Uh, yeah, we're, 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 we're going to do this on the fly a little bit. It's good. It's good. Actually, but, I, got, I remember the scripture too, so that's good. Well, what is it? Uh, it's, I don't know the exact scripture, but I remember what it says. I believe it's Revelation. 18. Revelation 18? Yeah, let me look it up real quick before you start. Yeah, go ahead. I, I, you you look it sure. up, and uh, and I'm just going to play this clip one more time so you can hear the things coming out of this woman's mouth Sugar. real quick. Uh, it's just, like you said, blasphemy. I'm sorry, guys. I had the volume down. Can you guys help us stop fucking praying in that fucking market? <laughs> in that fucking market? Come, help us. Help me! Help me! Help me! Baby, come over here. Let's talk. Here. Okay, great. So, I mean, we have the devil name. What's your name? Bernadette. Hi, Bernadette. Good. You're fucking awesome. I killed his son. Why can't I? Yeah. I killed his son. Why can't I? God murdered his son on that piece of shit wood. Come outside. I brought my raiders for you to kill. And you know what? The fucking police. This fucking performance is getting better. This performance was getting better. But priest, come outside. We want to talk. We want to fucking talk. Why the fuck is the priest terrorizing my motherfucking uterus? Why the fuck are you terrorizing? And then they finish it off with this great, great song. Take God for abortion. 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 And that's why Eric was saying that's just straight up blasphemy. And like I was saying, man, I, like I was about to cry, dude. Just, just. Mm-hmm. Yep. What that reminds me of, and I told you on the phone the other day. Mm-hmm. What that reminds me of is, um, in the demoniac. Yeah. That Jesus cast all the all the demons out of in the Bible uh, on three different accounts. It 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 all gives a little bit more detail mm-hmm. it, from Matthew to Mark to to Luke. Matthew is kind of vague on what he focuses on. He just focuses on the fact that the man is demon possessed, yep. and, and and Jesus cast out the demon yep. into the swine. Mark um, mentions that. Uh, Says then, uh, then then they came to the other side of the sea mm-hmm. in in Mark chapter five, and uh, when he had come out of the the boat, immediately there there uh, met him out of the tombs a man with an unclean spirit. So this guy is living first of all in a place that's unclean, mm-hmm. but I'm right. I'm I'm guessing this guy's a Gentile anyways. Yeah. But he's living in the tombs with dead bodies, yep. um, and he has an unclean spirit, an unclean spirit, and who had his dwelling. 
amongst the tombs, and no one could bind him, nor even with chains, because he had often been bound with shackles and chains, and the chains had been pulled apart by him, and the shackles broken into pieces. Mm -hmm. And Luke, Luke expounds a little bit further in Luke chapter 8, verses 26 through uh, like chapter uh, verse 40 or so, and he says... Um, he, he says he stepped out on the land and there met a certain man from the city who had demons, not mm -hmm. an unclean spirit, yeah. but demons, mm -hmm. for a long time. And he wore no clothes. Yeah. He's naked. Yep. Uh, nor did he live in a house, but in the tombs, which Mike, like Mark said. nor did. Uh, and when he saw Jesus, he cried out and fell down before him and with a loud voice said, What have I to do with you, Jesus, Son of Man, Most High? I beg you, do not torment me. Mm -hmm. When I saw that woman... Yeah. It's the first time. And yeah. the way she's acting, I, 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 I immediately, guys. Same thing. And I'm not joking. I know what I'm you're thinking. Say. I'm thinking you're, you literally are possessed. Yes, yeah, she's got, she's you, got several demons. Yeah. You have easily an unclean. You, you, you have something. And he cast a legion of demons out of this that man, and Yeshua did. Right. It and, says, and he said legion because many demons were entered into him after Jesus asked his And name. you know, legion means it's literally uh, a French term for a troop of 6,000 soldiers. So there were 6,000 demons in this person. And when somebody's doing something like that on the street, they're pretty close to that. So she's got thousands. Uh, and the only, only person who's never had them is our Lord. <laughs> Bottom line, i got to say this. You think Re so? Yes. You think so? Well, well that's a, he's the first. Others, there's 144,000 that probably haven't either. That's another subject. <laughs> but yeah, that, we could talk for, about that for another hour or two. But it, you said that. That's exactly what I was thinking. You see somebody doing something that bizarre in public. They're not in their right mind. They don't have access to their mind. It's been hacked. Satan's got a hold of them. Doing, she's doing his will. And so was everybody else that was there singing those songs. And I, I thought about what the Lord said. He said, woe to those who call evil good and good evil. That's what they were singing. So yeah, that's horrible. That's man. proof of this generation where we're at. Man, yeah. that's horrible. And and the way she was like, she was like, "What's your name? What's your name?" And and that girl looked like she looked, she looked so, like when the when the scriptures say Jesus was yeah. moved with compassion. Yeah. That look on that girl's face. Yeah. Like if you guys go re rewind that, mm -hmm. and, and and look at the girl's face, yeah. she looks like just hurt for the person mm -hmm. she's looking at her in her eyes and that girl that woman goes what's your name and she goes bernadette and she goes i'm bernadette you yeah, know like, i'm just like crazy yeah. i'm like yep. oh man it's just it's just eerie it is it's that's that's the the interactions between people should be peaceable should be uh, composed uh, like what we're doing right now if there's ever somebody that's doing something that wild you know they're not in control of their own thinking because it's just not normal it's not normal to do something like that on the street it wasn't happening 60 years ago it's happening now and it's progressively been happening because of protests and uh all those things man and, and what you just saw was literally like um like literally there was a fence yeah. a fence a barrier mm -hmm. with cops keeping the evil on one at bay on this side yep. and keeping God's people safe on this side. Mm -hmm. um, how long we can expect that to continue? That's like a that's a whole different story. How how art how the system's going nowadays. Yeah. But so have you seen all the across the country all the, the the increased level of the attack on the church over this Roe versus Wade stuff? Yeah, that's a good good point to, to make it even. It's not just that one isolated incident. It's going all across the country. Right. Because they're given these freedoms to do this. Like we're all given the freedom of speech and they're abusing that right to to speak evil. Um, and so like the scripture that I did think of right when I was watching that too, was it was Revelation 18. It's 18.2. I'll just read it real quick. Uh, With a mighty voice he shouted, Fallen, fallen has Babylon the great. She has become a dwelling for demons and a haunt for every impure spirit. A haunt or a a house basically that they can dwell in for every unclean bird a haunt for every unclean and detestable animal that was the new Interna new international translation yeah i read the and i'm going go ahead go ahead keep going i'm gonna read another translation yeah do that put more clarity on it here um let's look at uh amplified i look at that one and he shouted in a mighty voice it says fallen fallen Certainly to be destroyed is what that means. 
is Babylon the Great. So this we're future tense. We're we're racing towards that. She has become a dwelling place for demons, a dungeon, a haunted by every unclean spirit. Like a, a filthy place, basically. Right. The world is looking worse, is what that means. And a prison for every unclean and loathsome bird. And that's not, bird's another word for spirits. So. Yeah. Dude, I was just, it's, it's funny, like, I was just um, going over Revelation a few, uh, Revelation 18 a few weeks ago, right. and it's eerie how similar that sounds to yeah. our country specifically, yeah. in particular. Yeah, um, we're seeing it on a daily basis. Like, if you read through Revelation 18 about what Mystery Babylon is like, it's materialistic. Mm -hmm. I mean, everybody cares about materials. Cares right. about possessions, you know. Mm -hmm. We can say that about today. The biggest and best next new yeah. thing, you know. I need a new phone. I need a shiny car. I Always need, I, else. I, you know, I need, yeah. I need, I need, I want, I want, I want. And your life mm -hmm. ends up being based upon these, these, just yourself, selfishness. Yeah. And here we're seeing it with, with, I, I, I want to kill my baby. Yeah, I just... want to sacrifice my child upon the altar of Molech Something. because we've done it since day one. That's exactly what it is. It's uh, sacrificing the next generation for what we want right now, what they want right now. Because right. they're not, the, uh, I've said it in one of my other videos, straight out of Revelation, it says they are literally Satan's children. So they're doing what their father, like he said to the like, Pharisees. Like Yeshua said, yeah. yeah. Straight to the Pharisees, you're your father the devil, so you're going to do what your father does. Destroy, right. Steals, kills, and destroys. So. And, so, and so, luckily, yes, the, the true church, you mm -hmm. know, we, we stand on these biblical principles that, right. that you know, we will not, we, we will out loud say that abortion is murder. Mm -hmm. And, well, that comes with some backlash. If we, uh, th this is from, this is from uh, Roman Orthodoxy on on Twitter. And I guess this, this, pro this profile just, uh, just covers... Mm -hmm what's especially what's been going on over this Roe versus Wade thing this is Colorado this is a church in Colorado Jesus loves abortion they're, they're vandalizing the church they're mm -hmm. painting blood on their their idols yeah I called them idols because I don't really right <laughs> I don't yeah. agree with That's with all is. the statues but anyways yep. um, my body my choice on the front door if we go down here this is St. Joseph's uh, St. Joseph's in Michigan you got 666. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not going to say that. YouTube won't like me. Mm -hmm. um, Republicans dead, upside down cross. Uh, we just watched this here in front of New York City. Uh, let's see this here. Where is this? Um, doesn't say, but got got some more, uh, some more vandalism. This was in, let's see, Lady of Angels. Not quite. Oh, Los Angeles. So they came in looking like hands maidens. Right. Yeah. <laughs> that's course. their that's their thing right now. They yeah. come in looking like handmaidens Handmaid still, to protest. Yeah. Yeah. You know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and then um, San Francisco, more of the handmaidens. Uh, yeah. Even look, even in Houston, pro choice is pro life. Mm -hmm. How did? They, oh gosh. Yeah, it's gonna be across the country. Yep. And then Katy, Texas. I know something happened in Katy. Mm -hmm. It's all over. This is the, my point. Is uh, yeah. Eric? Is it's just all over? Yeah. It's it's escalating. That's it's escalating to. It's, you know, sometimes I feel crazy. Yeah. Looking at the world outside and what's going on, I'm like, no, nah, this just surely can't be happening. Like, in, like God's prophecy is being fulfilled right before my eyes. Yeah. You know, I'm just going crazy. Yeah. Especially when very few people are there to reassure you that. This is what the word says. We have to have other brothers and sisters to be talking about it. And if we don't, we're going to feel crazy. Like, am I the only one? That's the, the very definition of insanity is to do the same thing, expecting different results. And we bring other people in. We're breaking that cycle. Like, that's that's what disciples need each other. That's where the show is headed. We're going to get there. We are right going to get there. I'm jumping in. Um, but uh, what, what was I? Um, let's see here. Like I said, it's getting bad out there with the church mm -hmm. uh, not with the church but against well, the church and then you have stuff like this take a take a look at this christian rights decades-long push to revoke abortion rights is just part of their broader agenda well what else what else do they want what else is at stake this is not just about abortion uh this is about a much broader uh, set of issues uh that are have, have that really are about a kind of white christian 
alt-right worldview. It's very important for us to recognize that it is Christian extremism that is at the root of the shame and the stigma that allows laws like this to pass, that allows justices like this to be uh, confirmed. Discovered that they could manufacture and then channel their moral outrage toward abortion, creating a new litmus test for conservative politicians. References to God and Christian beliefs are often invoked in these political instances, with some saying outright that they believe America is a Christian nation. How mm. dare you, sir? Uh, I mean, I cannot believe, I cannot believe. So, oh, so the news is jumping on board and, mm -hmm. and it's, it's these Christian extremists, Eric. It's, it's, uh, you know, we're yeah. to, we're to blame for the fact that you can't kill your baby. Yes. They're going to blame everybody else but themselves. What do you think when, um, when, uh, in, I believe it's Thessalonians, Second Thessalonians, I believe it is where it says, you know, and then the restrainer is taken away. What do you think the restrainer is? Honestly, yeah. this is, I mean, I've heard different things. It, the, the, the Holy Spirit filled believers. Okay. Yeah. That's, that's the simplest way to put it. Because if nobody's here representing the kingdom, then the darkness can overtake the land. So. Okay. Well, from, from that perspective, like from that perspective, mm -hmm. the restrainer being the church, the true believers in, in mm -hmm. Christ, yeah. um, is what holds back evil. And you sit here and you, you see, you see the news being like saying just that. Yeah. It's like, it's these Christian extremists why we cannot, you know, yeah. kill our unborn child. I mean. Yeah. And so it was from the, throughout the ages. Every time a prophet rose up, they got yeah. him out of the way. <laughs> you so know what? Yeah. We're in that generation. We're in the final generation. They're going to try to get everybody out of the way. Because there's more people than ever that are saying this is wrong. Well, not, not. There's always going to be more. They're going to be saying this is right because the brought us the road to destruction. The, our Savior, our our Master, and and uh, the Savior of the world told us and all disciples who listened to His voice, this is what they're going to do. Like there's always been, He's always warned us. It said in Matthew 24. It's, that's the reference. Right. We're going to see all these things happen. You know, I saw something in the comments on one of my videos. I think I was doing a video on the rapture, mm -hmm. and I, I want to ask you what you think about that too here in a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, but I was I was doing a video on the on the rapture. And um, somebody in the comments, because you know I had mentioned Second Thessalonians, mm -hmm. and uh, and and just that 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 uh, you know the the restrainer the, the the day the day the man of lawlessness will not come until the restrainer is taken away, right. and and I said just that that the, the restrainer is like the holy the holy spirit spirit led believers. church yeah. the the, yep. the believers in Christ yep. and. Um, and uh, somebody in the comments said something I found very interesting that mm -hmm. I, I can't negate. I, you know, it has a good point. Mm -hmm. He's like, no, the restrainer is not the Holy Spirit or the church. Mm -hmm. He said the restrainer is, is the dragon. He's like, the dragon mm -hmm. right now is still before the throne of God. Right. And, in, and until the book of Reve the, the part of Revelation is fulfilled where he's thrown down, mm -hmm. that is the restrainer, the fact that the dragon is not here yet. Okay. Yeah. Absolutely. And I was like, uh, makes sense. I was like, that's interesting. Just wanted to throw that out there. I thought I, I thought that was interesting. I, I was... Yeah, uh, and we're gonna see it all unfold one way or another. So, <laughs> so we're in it. Anyways, guys, just for your reference, that was Second Thessalonians, chapter two, verse five. Do you remember that when I was with you still? Uh, that I was still with you. I told you these things, and now you know what is restraining, mm -hmm. that he may be revealed in his own time. Um, and other translations say it, you know, yeah. a little, a little more clearly. Mm -hmm. But um, oh my goodness! So, so what else we got here? Uh, so yeah, the news is attacking the church. The people are attacking the church. Mm -hmm. Righteousness is being condemned. Um, like Isaiah said, uh, "Woe to those who call good evil and evil good." They 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 replace bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. That's mm -hmm. what we're seeing right now. Yep. And um. So the church is under attack, but you know what? The church is under attack by society, mm -hmm. the world, the enemy, but also the church is under attack from within by the church. This is a, a, a Lutheran church in Chicago. Check it out. Mm -hmm. So with many other exhortations, John proclaimed the good news to the people. That's amazing. Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. 
You may be seated, and I'd like to invite any children or people who would like to see a picture book that I will be showing on the iPad here. Anyone who'd like a closer view of that to come up and sit. Um, actually, um, come up and sit somewhere on the What sucks here. about this? I have an awesome story to share with you today. I'm really excited yeah, to share it with you. Listen, I have a question first, though. Have any of you ever seen a drag queen? No. No, is this so? This is everybody's first time they're ever seeing a drag queen. Well, hello. Um, I am also a boy most of the time when I'm here, but today I. Today. Yes, beautiful. So. Yes, beautiful. No. Uh, no. Yeah, it's terrible. Terrible. So it's a horror to the Lord. It's a horror to anybody who loves the Lord. And we see all these strange things begin to happen. Or they're, they've been happening, but begin to increase. Man, I, I tell you what, somebody needs to watch, uh, or needs to watch, needs to read Revelations two, ver chapters 2 through 3. Uh, yeah, it's in there. That, that, that church is one of one of the ones or maybe many of the the different churches Jesus mentioned to repent mm -hmm. lest I a b c or d right you know exactly which one comes to mind to you I already know yeah spew him out of his mouth it's it's worse than lukewarm to me I think he says lukewarm they're they're done that there will be the ones who hear that on that day Lord we did all these things in your name get away from me I don't know you anymore go to outer darkness man and that's they're not understanding who they are they don't understand what spirits are in them to make them do those things to cause them to do those things i i would have to lean towards uh chapter 2 verse 18 of revelation uh these things says the son of god who has the who has eyes like a flame of fire and his feet like fine brass you i know your works love service faith and your patience mm -hmm. and as and as for your works the last are more than the first. Nevertheless, I have a few things against you because you allow that woman, Jezebel, there you go. who calls herself a prophetess, yep. to teach and seduce my servants to commit sexual immorality and eat things sacrificed to idols. Yep. And I gave her time to repent of her sexual immorality, mm -hmm. and she did not. Yep. And, and it's not... I wanted to show you this. This is what um, the mm -hmm. premise of what right. he's teaching these poor children... Right, right. Yeah. Who, who 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 listened with a with a trusting heart because yeah. they're children and Jesus said, yep. "Woe to those who would who would lead one of these little ones astray or cause one of these little ones to stumble. Yep. It would be better than a millstone be tied around his neck yep. and be tossed in the depths of the sea than to harm one of these little ones who exactly. believe in me." That's the same thing I was thinking. And he yep. is sitting there, yep. dressed as a drag queen, te justifying it under the guise of joy. Take a look. Yep. Earlier in the service, I talked about joy as liberation or as freedom to be who you want to be and do what you want to do. I don't know about you. To be who you want to be yeah. and do what you want to do. Right. So anything goes. That's basically what he's saying. Y'all can do whatever you want to children who, oh, so I can do whatever I want. That means they can do whatever they want and they're his age. So it'll be worse. Yeah, and they're trying to teach it under the guise of biblical joy. That's not what biblical joy is. They're leaving a whole lot out. <laughs> you think? <laughs> yeah. You think? Yeah. Golly. And that's the danger of Maybe. these children. They're, what they're going to suffer and what, what's going to happen to this generation coming up, they're already rioting in different places when they don't get their way. And that's, the, who knows, that's... So many schemes. The joys to do what I want mm -hmm. that makes me feel what it was exactly. Okay. Yeah. No, Jesus didn't say, uh, you know, um, if you love me, obey me. Right. Do what I command you to do. And then and then you often have people say, oh. um, well, Jesus never said that. That's why we had, when we had a discussion, not without you know bringing out any specifics or any names, but when yeah. we were having a discussion with a certain individual, I mm -hmm. said, okay, wait a minute, before we get into this, right. do we believe in the full canon of Scripture as right. the Word of God, or are we going to nitpick, Paul said yeah. that, Jesus didn't. Yep. Uh, you Taking know, Moses context. said that, yeah. blah, 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 didn't. I got, yeah. I got news for you. The Bible says that every Scripture is breathed, by the, by, right. breathed through the Holy Spirit yeah. through men, yeah. led by the Holy Spirit. Yeah, so, exactly. So I always have that conversation. So don't give me that 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 crap that 
G- Jesus never said that. Well, uh, well, Moses did say it. He yeah. said, "A man shall not wear women's clothing, and a, nor women wear a man's clothing." Right. And then they'll say, "Well, back then the men were dresses." Okay, we're talking about social ex- norms. Yeah. Social norms that have been in place for thousands of years. So. Yeah. Yep. I mean, I can go somewhere in a different part of the world, and, 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 and they're dressed different. Don't get me started on that, because now you start thinking about Sodom and Gomorrah. They were left in that city to do what they wanted. What happened to them? There you go. And so the world, it says it'll be worse than anyone who rejects this than it was for Sidon, which is Sodom and Gomorrah, on the day that that generation, whoever says it, we can do what we want. That's what they were doing in Sodom and Gomorrah. And then there was, finally, he gave them a mercy after mercy after mercy, to, to repent, it gives every generation and every city a chance to repent, like Nineveh. It gave them a chance to repent and sent warnings. I'm sure there were prophets that went there. And so they had been given warning after warning. And finally, the Lord sent the angels down and told them, uh, told Lot and his family, get out. It's about to go down. Str- sudden destruction will come on any nation, any, no matter how great the generation looks and how great, no, how, no matter how much technology they have, they will have a day of judgment, a day that that city will be thrown down, as what happened in Jerusalem and Israel when the Lord was there. He said, no stone's going to be left on another because this generation's rejected me. Right. You know, I've, t- I've tried to tell people that in the past, that, yeah. that, that like, yeah. dude, s- certain sins are worse than others. Yeah, Jesus even said, well, how much worse will it be for you on the day of judgment? Because he, he had been... He had been performing miracles we've been warned. preaching the word of god he's in their midst he's walking with them like john said i dwelt among you and y'all did not receive me yep. you know so yeah. he's saying much worse on the day of judgment will it be for you because right. had these miracles been rotten rotten sodom yeah. and gomorrah they would have repented in dust and ashes exactly you know how much worse for you on judgment day will yeah. it be and and i like what you were saying it's like mm. you know with sodom and gomorrah yeah. he 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 Abraham, God bless his heart. I love how the Bible shows the Bible shows um, the uh, the uh, the humanness of, yeah. of, of of the patriarchs. You know, mm-hmm. they were not sinless by any means necessary. We right. wouldn't need Yeshua, but right. but I love how they show their faults. And Abraham, God bless his heart, mm-hmm. he questioned God over and over, and he said uh, he said. Uh, you know, Lord, you wouldn't destroy the city. You're like, well, what if there's 50 righteous people? And there he's like, go. I won't destroy the city for 50 righteous people. Yeah. Okay, well, what, what about 40? I won't destroy it for 40. <laughs> and he kept getting him down to like 10. Reasonable. Let's be reasonable yeah, here. Yeah, to yeah, like 10. And he's like, I won't do it for 10. Right. And they went in, and they didn't find anyone. Nope. Except Lot, who took him in and tried to keep him from getting raped. Right. The angels. Trying to do the right thing. So he, had, so he destroyed it. The morals of that city was gone. They were gone. Anyways, yeah, going down a rabbit hole there. But yeah. yeah. We're not only being attacked, the, tr- the true church isn't even only being attacked from the outside world, from the so- social norms nowadays, and mm-hmm. now the attack is coming from within the church, and I get yeah. most bothered yeah. when we go after children. And right now, this, this system, mm-hmm. children yeah. have a target on their back. They always have, yeah, every generation. You go back to Pharaoh, right? You go back to the Lord's time, and... And uh, the, uh, can't think of the, the C, not Caesars, but uh, what am I trying to say? <laughs> the, uh, the Herod. Okay. The, yeah. uh, ordered into law that they'd be destroyed too. It's just a different generation, but they're using you, abortion yeah. and they're using technology. They're using teaching as Hitler did too, right? He, he, he did the same thing. He was Satan's uh, spawn, so he's going to try to corrupt the children for the next generation. He even said that. He, like His whole philosophy was, his whole Bible he wrote up was, let's influence a generation and we'll take over the world. You know, and that's, that's how Satan works. He tries to dominate and destroy everybody by, by force and by craft. These are, these are the sorceries. So I know that's meat, but it's truth. Yeah, and, and it, just, it just it continues. This is a New York City church. I'm just show it real quick. The poor children. They're just the children. I mean, these, uh, it's, I know, know. (laughs) these kids, and they don't know any better. They're They're being led astray. They're following, you know, uh, the, uh, that's the uh, hissing enchanter I've heard said before, seducing the children to do whatever. And the Lord knows what they're doing when they're not there in a congregation like that. If you're dressing like that, what are they doing back home? What are they doing behind closed doors? 
those children no telling what's happening and uh, that's a whole nother deal but that's what's that uh, sodom and gomorrah they were doing stuff like that and that's what they're trying to to recreate that's obviously they're following uh, their father it's not god it's not our father it's not yahweh man I'm kind of at a loss for words here. It's kind no, of bad for a podcast to be at a loss for words. No, I am too. It's 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 a it's a it, well, you have those moments, man. This is real. We're talking about, you know, on the spot. We're pouring our hearts out here. So, um, let's play one more. Um, uh-huh. that, that, that not even, not even. Uh, you okay? <laughs> so good. So. It's one thing, and it, and it is a t- an attack on God for, for that to be going on mm-hmm. um, under the guise of Christianity. But a United Methodist at Duke University took it a step further. Uh, hold on to your butts. Mm-hmm. It may be a little quiet. Good may have turned morning, up. the holy and queer one be with you. She said, hold on, wait a minute. I'm going to make sure we heard that right. Yeah. All right. I'm going to be quiet. Good morning, the holy and queer one be with you. Good morning and welcome to worship. My name is Caroline Camp. I use she, they pronouns. I oh, I'm am so the glad you informed me on that. For Duke Divinity Pride, and I am ecstatic to see this worship space so full and so vibrant with color. Thank you all for being here at the first ever Divinity Pride worship mm. collaboration. And, and she goes on for a second. Um, she just called God queer, a queer. Yeah, yeah it's blasphemy. We want to Speaking thank everybody who had a hand in making this happen. And they're about the to pray. Office, um, to I guess this is a, a music whatever. D- you. Thank you for being pride here today. divinity. What did she we say? Oh goodness pride gracious! The, the divine a worship space that honors you. You'll hear. You'll hear. Let's listen to the prayer that this uh, and good identity quote congregation today, you will hear spouts out of their mouth. Amazing mm-hmm. speakers and three beautiful soloists who will give words to their experiences with the God who calls them. We want to affirm everyone to be who they truly are. There's that being your... step into mm-hmm. the Holy One's fire It'll that be burns what makes away you happy. all that says we are not good enough and refines us by the Pentecostal fire to be who exactly the great queer one calls us to be. The great queer one calls us to be. Let the spirit move you today. Lift your hands and your voices and dance in whatever way is most freeing for you. Would you please stand okay, step listen to this. into this worship space and pray with me the words found in your bulletin and on the screen. Strange one, fabulous one, fluid and ever becoming one. Do not allow us to make our ideas of you into an idol. You are as close to us as our own breath, and yet your essence transcends all that we can imagine. You are mother, father, and parent. You are sister, brother, and sibling. You are drag queen and trans man and gender fluid incapable of limiting your vast expressions of beauty. Embodied in us, your creation, we recognize our... That's enough. Yeah, I was about to throw up. <laughs> I'm sick. She just said you are a drag queen, yeah. trans man, and, and and fluid one. or like She's meaning gender fluid, right? Bunch, bunch of words. Makes you nauseous. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, uh, the first thing when she started speaking was <sighs> when she opened up with the queer thing, and then with uh, uh, just going on about how whatever they think is right. They're just spewing off a bunch of things that make them all feel better, and they're they're recording it. They're all testifying to each other that this is okay when they haven't read the Word, obviously. They don't know Holy Spirit. And so the first thing that came to mind when I heard that was Synagogue of Satan. You're right. It just clears day in my mind, so... Uh, my dad and me and my dad had conversations about that, and it was very clear that Paul mentioned it. So I need to actually look that one up. Wow. Yeah. Um, so that's what we're looking at right now. Um, and obviously not every church, but we need to see that this is starting, mm-hmm. that this is, you know, um, a, a virus spreads in 
it, it it's one thing when we see it on in the outside world, but when we see it in the quote church, we have got to start paying attention, and so when we talk about these things, dude, mm. one, one one thing yeah. I think about a lot, right? Mm. And we were just talking about it, how, and prophecy and all that, and I mean we're looking at this is from Newsweek. We're looking at food shortages across right. the board. Parents driving hours for baby formula. Um, mm-hmm. When you know, trying to find it. I guess they should go to the border where where Biden's shipping it to to <laughs> to people in holding cells. Mm-hmm. To understand, all babies need baby formula. But but you know, he he, he was elected to take care of his country first. Yeah. Um, but we won't get into it. Mm. M- moms will run out of baby formula in a month. Uh, baby formula shortages, baby formula. These everyday food items prices are set to rise because of the Ukrainian war. Viral videos reveal nearly empty shelves in Ukrainian grocery stores. Article after article. These mm. are item consumers. These are items consumers are having trouble finding amid shortages. Mm. Uh, Chicago school lunchrooms stayed open during standoff and drop in demand. Oh, well, good. At least they look at it sack well, mm. at least they got something dude the uk facing food shortages yep. as a rise in energy costs halts some production empty shelves north korea entering lean period with food shortage it's all across the world so mm. you know that's one thing when i talk um about this stuff eric mm. uh, it's one thing to look at what's just going on in your country right you know when it comes to prophecy because i i don't think that that that's legit you know when we look at prophecy we need to look at how it Worldwide, God didn't mention America any time in the Bible. Uh, so, I mean, but he does mention... Nations. Nations. Uh, yep. So when we start to see North Korea, UK, Ukraine, America, mm-hmm. um, just all over the place, yep. you know, wh- where was the other one? Uh, coconut crisis, looming major... Venezuelan mm-hmm. criminals lure children into gangs with food. Look at, look at these shelves in Venezuela. Mm-hmm. I mean, North Korea, it's just... Look at this. What's yep. that say? Um, where'd it go? 50 animals die of hunger in Venezuelan zoo. 50 mm. animals have died from hunger in Caracas zoo yep. as food shortages continue. So, um, that's part of prophecy. Famine. Yes, it is. Wars, rumors of wars. Yep. Revelation 6. Yeah. Just, uh, and Matthew 24. Matthew 24. And they are all, those are the two witnesses. So, um... Yeah, actually, I'll pull it up here in a minute. Uh, but it's in Revelation 6. It, and just off the top of my head without having to look at it, it literally is um, famines happen when they're, the nations are given authority. Uh, you go back to ancient times, what happened with uh, um, Joseph and the prophecy, and that he was given the interpretation of the dream that it would be seven years of, of uh, plenty and seven years of famine. Right. And famines usually last about seven years before we can recover from them. And if we're not given the the uh, not given the uh, authority by God in the the foreknowing, being still listening to Him, gathering together with other people who are also listening to prepare for that, we're going to suffer along with others. Now, the, this is in this generation's what it, Revelation six is saying is that they're given authority. The writer. Uh, I'm not sure that's a pale horse, but the writer is given the ability, uh, that spirit over the people, over the principalities in the heavens, is given the ability to send a message. Since there's so few people who are obedient and uh, and repentant, to basically um, starve the people. But it also is a means for us to draw closer to the Father and for His sustenance, for His protection. And that's also in scriptures too that we're going to go to him and he will keep us safe and provide for us during those famines. But those who, it says, will, those who don't go to him will suffer destruction, will suffer the loss, and will die of the famine. It says that a third of the, the world will die of the famine. So you want, to look, you, want to, you want to look that up if you can. But it's basically warning us for this generation to be repentant, to be humble, to gather together. It's Revelation 6, uh, the, third, the third seal. So yeah. let me ask you this. Yeah. Um, you know, let's chase let's chase some rabbit holes. I don't mind. Yeah. So, what do you think about? Um, let me get this a little closer. So, what do you think about uh, Christians uh, prepping? Uh, 
it's it's wise, it, but it, it, it does. If you go back to what following what the master said, and it, it may be con, concerning the times. There's a time to prepare. Like it says, there's a time for everything, season and, and time for everything. And discerning that and knowing the signs of the times is when to prepare. And I believe it is wise because it says a wise person. Another scripture says, I think it's Ecclesiastes. Could be wrong, but. It's Ecclesiastes. Uh, yeah, a wise person sees uh, trouble and prepares, right? Oh, right. Uh, I think that's Proverbs. Proverbs. But I thought we were talking about a time to kill, a time right. to die, that's, a time to see. That's Ecclesiastes. That's Ecclesiastes. Yeah, yeah. Gotcha. But it's in the scriptures, right? And, and it basically says it's good to prepare because obviously we want to prepare for our. Like just natural affection and, and human uh, care and kindness, the fruits of the Spirit, is to take care of each generation. Be prepared for that. Now, when there's shortages. And I think everybody across America, whether they are a believer or not, is preparing in some way. Right? Mm-hmm. To, that has some kind of sustenance, some kind of a storehouse. Uh, but the, the scriptures clearly tell us not to store up those things. Right, right. But so it's it's a matter of being shrewd and wise, shrewd and gentle. Right, as shrewd as serpents, gentle as doves. Well, wise. so 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 you just said two different things. Right. Well, it's a so, matter. It's a matter of knowing. Where's which that balance? One. The balance is is going to him, <laughs> and he'll tell us. So I can't tell you, he has to tell you, and if we agree on that, then there's something we can do together or as a community, right? Because they did it as a community when the famine happened, even to um, to the Pharaoh, right? Well, you don't con- you don't consider uh, storing up food and water, uh, storing up treasures, do you? Right, of course not. Okay, that, that's necessity. But, but it that's, will be one day. Sustenance. It, it'll be a treasure one day during famine. Right. So... It can be considered treasure. Oh, the one part I t- tend to compare it to is when um, the the dude uh, Jesus told the parable about the man who had like storehouses. He had right. lots of storehouses and lots of food, and That's he dope. saw how much food he had, and he was like, "I can retire." Right. So basically, he 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 sat back and did nothing, like and um right. and God told him, "You fool! Gonna... This this very night, yeah. your soul is required of you." Mm-hmm. And I took that as meaning like, "You have all of this. You have plenty." Well, and there's people who don't share it. Yeah. 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 Give. Don't be ha- keeping it for yourself. Yeah, it's it's all the teaching, but the So the, there is that balance. You want yeah, you want to apply it to today, um personally, um it's good to have enough, you know, on store. And uh, if if anybody's able to get more for others, right? That's just why. Right, uh, right. But when it comes to when it runs out, it's better to prepare your own harvest, prepare and learn how. We've discussed this a little bit, and it's a good time to kind of share a little bit about it. Like other people are preparing, they're starting their own gardens. They're actually trying to outlaw. It's another thing in other states. Wow. Outlawing, and yeah, I'm sure you're aware of this. They're outlawing uh, home homesteads and, and the ability to. I haven't to, heard this. To do it in your backyard in some cities. I know California. They're actually outlawed generators, gas-powered generators. So in case there's power outages, wow, you have to run to the government. You have to run to, uh, oh, keywords. You have to run towards uh, someone for help, and that leads into the mark. That's that's it's another thing. It's like it, it it puts pressure on others who haven't prepared and haven't pulled out of the system, as it says, come out of her in Revelation. Quit quit uh, feeding into the system by supporting it and stepping away and starting communities beforehand, as they've done throughout the ages. You know, it had to happen. You know, there's ice ages show that people were they're pulling away from cities because they were listening to the father. Really, they're throughout the ages. They how how do we get here? <laughs> they had to prepare. They had to get through that generation. No, you're right. And so, yeah, this the simple part is we should prepare. We should gather together. And I even went on for three hours one night because I couldn't sleep. Uh, went live on my YouTube channel talking about the best way to prepare for it, studying what other people are doing across the country. There are people that already have communities started that are uh, they're 90% off grid. So, right. So those are things to do prepare. Um, and those are things that I'm doing personally too. So, and again, guys, if you missed it, um, his YouTube channel is disciples heart. Uh, go check it out. He's got some great videos on there. Um, uh, I've noticed you post late, yeah, like, like you you, you you get you get the you get the spirit roaring at night, and you're like, I'm going live for two two and a half hours. <laughs> I have to. And, uh, and, got, and he's got, got great. Yeah. <laughs> he's got but, great videos on there of yeah. uh, uh, a few videos that he's he's starting to get out there on the street. He's starting to make God's voice heard on the street. Mm-hmm. It's pretty cool. Um, and uh, speaking of YouTube channels, I'm gonna say it again. If you haven't subscribed, hit the subscribe button and hit the bell so you know when new stuff comes out. I'm trying to get on here more often. Trying, mm-hmm. I, I, I want to. 
I want to. I, I want to be able to make a difference. I'm probably going to be out on the road with Eric at, at some point mm-hmm. because I am getting tired of the nine to five, 40 hours a week. That that doesn't that doesn't really in my heart with the times going on. Mm-hmm. It doesn't seem to be kingdom work. And and right now. Right. The work for the kingdom is what should be the na- main priority. And guys, like mm-hmm. and share this. I mean, hit that like button and, and throw it on your social media um, so that the things we're talking about can come to light. Right. But anyways, like I was saying, so so I uh, you know I I've been telling uh, my listeners to to you know get prepared. Mm-hmm. The Bible te- speaks about preparing and, right. and prepared preparedness. Now, don't rely on that. Right. Your God is your ultimate ultimate source of uh, you know of, of strength yeah. and and uh, comfort and guidance. Yeah, he provides it all. But 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 he also gave you a brain. And when yeah. we <laughs> and when we see things like that, when we when we when we see things uh all down the list, mm-hmm. just all across the the world of food shortages coming you know fertilizers is about to disappear um just just guys do your best to prepare and and we mentioned that because like he was saying in 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 revelation chapter 6 verse 5 when he opened the third seal i heard the third living creature saying come and see so i looked and behold a black horse and he was sat on it had a pair of scales in one hand and i heard a voice in the midst of the four living creatures saying a quart of wheat for a denarius which is a day's wage mm-hmm. So a quart of wheat for a day's wage and three quarts of barley for a day's wage. And don't harm the oil and the wine. That's famine-like conditions. Right. That's saying, look, it's hard to find. Mm. And since it's hard to find, we, come on, supply demand. We know this. And yep. since it's hard to find, you are going to pay for it. Yep. There it goes. Prices Thumbs skyrocket. Mm-hmm. And we see it all across the board right now. And what, um, I don't want to get ahead of myself. But Jesus also talked about birth pangs. Mm-hmm. Birth pangs meaning it's not quite tribulation yet. And e- even, in, even in the birth pangs, he said pestilence, famines, earthquakes in different places, wars and rumors of wars. But this is not, this is not the end. You know, these are just birth pangs. Mm-hmm. Like, a, like, a, uh, like a, um, uh, a mother in labor going into labor and having contractions. The contractions get more intense and more intense. Yep. And, 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 the, and, the, and the contractions are, are, are closer and closer together as she gets ready to birth that child. Exactly. That's how it's going to be when tribulation hits. Do you agree? Yeah, it's going to get uh, tougher and tougher. So we got to get closer and closer to the Father. Like Jesus said, he said, he said wars and rumors of wars. If you go to Twitter right now, guys, mm. it is just... Um, and and Twitter, whether you like it or not, is a hotbed for 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 getting a a, a, a gauge on mm-hmm. where our country is sitting right now, mm-hmm. and it ain't looking pretty, guys. Yep. I mean, all over the place. Uh, when com- like right here, when conservatives say Roe versus Wade was wrongly decided, what they really meant is that the Civil War was wrongly decided. Mm-hmm. Uh, you want to see a civil war in this country? Overturn Roe versus Wade. Roe versus Wade is much is much about states' rights as the Civil War was. Uh, I think overturning Roe versus Wade will trigger another civil war. It just goes on and on. Everybody is at each other's throats, mm-hmm. and they see it. They see it coming. Yep. And like I said, yep. um, wars, Ukraine war, mm-hmm. NATO, the expansion of NATO, yep. China siding with Russia to a certain to a certain degree. Um, dude, we're looking down the barrel of world war, and we're also looking down the barrel of civil war. I mean. Do you agree? Yeah, it's sure looking like it. It's straight out of the word. Wars are going to increase. Wars and rumors of wars. That's the straight from the Savior himself. He he told the disciples to pass it on to this generation, and so we'll know when it's it's that much closer to his return. And on top of that, um, before we c- kind of, I, I know we've been going for an hour, but we got a t- topic to discuss once we mm-hmm. go through, through these these uh these articles and stuff, but this is from the Gateway Pundit. Uh, global government alert, government alert. Threat to national sovereignty said to go down May 22nd to the 28th at the WHO World Health Assembly. Mm-hmm. Now, what are they talking about? They're talking about, this is from, um, this is from the World Council for Health.org. In the background of this, let's just go to the key issues to understand. On January 18, 2022, the United States Department of Health and Human Services proposed amendments to the IHR. These amendments give control over the declaration of public health emergency in any member state to, who, to, to, to the WHO Director General, even over the objection of the member state. The Director General communicated the text of the proposed amendments on 20, 
uh, on January 20th, 2022 via uh, a, a circular letter to the state parties. So basically what it's saying here, dude, mm-hmm. I don't know if you knew about this before we got together, mm-hmm. but basically what this is saying is the Department of Public Health for our country mm-hmm. has put amendments into the international health regulations to the WHO. Like, see, prior to these amendments, mm-hmm. um, we've always had an understanding with the WHO that we will we will recognize public health emergencies, but we will act so- we will act sovereignly as an independent nation on how we want to mitigate these public health emergencies. Right. Yeah. These amendments will give that authority to the WHO. Yeah. And you just saw it, yeah. it, it, it will um, negate. If if you don't like what the WHO says, you got to do too, too bad. bad. Yeah, yeah. It's like Doctor Who is now uh, calling the shots. We're not basically. So that basically they're given the, the the right to if they say we we must abide by this particular medical procedure, we have to do it. And it goes back to, yeah. in my opinion, this goes back to a one world order. Yeah. This goes back to a one world government, a one world military, mm-hmm. and it's all starting to come together with, with with UN and the EU. Exactly. And the NATO is the world military. Yep. Um. You got Putin who don't like it. He says, you know, get off my doorstep with yeah. NATO, and I'm not going to get into it. Yeah. But, look, if you guys are out there, you know, no offense to you, but mm-hmm. if you guys are out there with, you know, your Ukraine flags on your profile and what whatnot, more, mm-hmm. fine, more power to you. But I, I would I would suggest you do a little bit more deeper of a dive into what's really going on mm-hmm. with Ukraine, with Biden's dealings in Ukraine. We're not going to say too much because the overlords at YouTube, mm-hmm. but, but... Yeah, AI. Man, it's just AI. And and speaking of which, guys, a little 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 um side note. I am going to start uploading to Rumble. I am going to uh, eventually. I if I can get you guys to go over to Rumble, I already have some videos uploaded over there. I can speak freely. Mm-hmm. I don't have the overlords of YouTube uh, looking over my shoulder, mm-hmm. um, in with with all the issues that I'm not allowed to talk about. Mm-hmm. Anyways, the truth, the truth. That being mm-hmm. said, back to the, uh, the, the Ukraine, yeah. you know, and NATO been expanding ever since the, the end of the cold war, mm-hmm. the end of the cold war, we agreed that NATO would like quit expanding, right. but go look at a map from 92 yeah. to 2020 mm-hmm. and look at how much NATO has continued to expand. Like, like we had an agreement with yeah. Russia that we would stop expanding. NATO was there to combat a cold Russia, mm-hmm. a Soviet union, USSR. Right. And when, when the Berlin Wall came down and the Cold War was declared over, you know, NATO was so, no longer anyways. Yeah, they're given authority <laughs> yeah, to expand, give but, them more reach. Right, and NATO yeah. has continued to expand as a one-world military, mm-hmm. um, and it keeps expanding around the border of Russia. And Russia just don't like it, so it's just a bad situation altogether. But mm-hmm. if you've got it black and white, like, hey, Ukraine yep. good, Russia bad, you've got it twisted. Yep. I'm not saying Russia's good no. by any means, by any stretch of the imagination. Right. But... To say Ukraine is is is, mm-hmm. is is the dog in your fight? Oh, goodness gracious. Wake up. Yep. I know offense, but yeah. wake up. Yeah, wars and rumors of wars. There you go. So we, got, so we got the wars and rumors of wars. Yeah. And we got Ukraine and Russia going on right now. Mm-hmm. Might lead into a World War III. You've seen countries taking sides. Very well It lo- looks like I just saw Finland has is, is drafted a request to become part of NATO. Mm-hmm. Once again, right by Russia. Right. It just, it's just not looking pretty. Nope. And... We're gonna all see how this, where this is going, real soon. Everything's getting consolidated into a one-world system. And you notice how it's so many things after another, which are seals that are being opened. There's events that happen in each one of those seals. So as those seals are being opened, it'll be more clear to us where we're at. It's the Lord said to the disciples of the day back then. How is it you can see the signs of the weather, but you can't see the signs of I the time? I just read that today. And so the yeah, only way we can see those signs is if we continue to look at Him, and He will remind us in the spirit where we're at we'll know it's just we'll know where we're at in those with those signs of the times we're not worried about the signs of the times but they're an indicator of how much more we need to be warning others to repent come back to the the narrow way because most are on the broad road and they're i can't say this enough put emphasis on it enough is why i go out and preach on the street is because i know they're lost brothers and sisters who don't know where we're at they don't know where we're at in the timeline of things we're they haven't been witnessed to, drawn in, and taught what the scriptures say. And that's, we're going to get, if you want to, get more into that in a second about what we need to do. Like, this moment in time. Right. Yep. So, yeah. So, with UN, 
mm-hmm. EU, WHO, the um, and and NATO just continued to expand. Right. You know, you got. You, what did you think about this last year when this came out? Like honestly, now they, it, it's a little bit of a stretch yeah. in my opinion. Sure. But it also is eerily similar. It is, and it's. I've seen other depictions of the beast, right? Of the of the the, the creatures that are described in Revelation, and it's pretty darn close i've seen others talk about it i really haven't looked too much into uh, the the makers but it's just another idol <laughs> to me just more idolatry yeah this is outside the the u.n headquarters i believe yeah. in new york mm-hmm. and uh whoever iris girl is I, I i'm sorry iris girl i don't mean to correct you here but you say described in daniel's dream right. daniel saw four different beasts right okay um, and this, this, the scripture you quoted is right out of Revelation 13. So you kind of got your, your Old Testament and New Testament uh, eschatology prophets a little mixed up there. Right. But yeah, that is straight out of Revelation mm-hmm. chapter 13. And I just want to read it to you and, and, and you just, you know, give me, give me your opinion. Um, then mm-hmm. I saw, then I stood on the sand of the sea and I saw a beast rising out of the sea, having seven heads, ten horns, and on his, on his horns, ten crowns. And his heads are blasphemous names. Now, uh, mm-hmm. Daniel does kind of explain that that, that that is a coalition of world powers. <laughs> the horns, the crowns, yeah. it's a coalition of world powers. Mm-hmm. Um, and now the beast which I saw was like a leopard. His feet were like the feet of a bear. His mouth like the mouth of a lion. And the dragon gave him his power, his throne, and great authority. It's just weird. It's just weird. When I saw that, I'm like, yeah, Really? This another weird thing going on. You couldn't have picked anything different. <laughs> you couldn't have picked anything other than that that looks like straight out of Revelation to be your. <laughs> yep. Well, any, are you trying to get us crazy kooks going? Eat, it's well, coming. That's exactly it. There's so like so much chatter. There's knowledge is increased. That's another prophecy, prophecy that's been fulfilled. That there's so much information. They called it the World Wide Web, the the information highway, and here we are with so much wit not not wisdom, excuse me, knowledge. There's increase of knowledge, right? Right. You get a lot of people are gonna be saying a lot of stuff. And then one last thing, uh, I'd, I'd be remiss if I didn't show you guys this. I just saw this yesterday. This is uh, this is from Israel 365 News, mm-hmm. and it straight up says Jews begin building third temple on Israel Independence Day. Mm-hmm. And this is a new article. This is May 6, 2022. Yep. What's, what's that? Nine days ago. Uh, and, and it goes into talking about how, you know, they're living in their land. They're, they're, they're secure in their land. Um, that they're a nation again, but yet they haven't. Y'all can go read the article, but yet they haven't uh, started building their, their mm-hmm. um, temple. Uh, and it went in there so so they're gonna start carving out stones they're getting mm-hmm. them ready they're like all right it's time when you start building mm-hmm. and i thought one thing i thought was interesting here is one of these rabbis who's carving stones he's uh it says joshua wander took part in the event while cutting the stones wander wore uh to fill in i don't know what that means and had his side arm ready personifying the prophecy of nehemiah that says as for the builders each one had his sword girded at his side and he was building the trumpeter stood beside me. Mm-hmm. So the, he's got his got his sidearm, and he is. They're starting to carve the rocks. Yep. I, I, all I can do is just show you what's going on out there, and show you what the Bible says. And that being said, one thing I really wanted to talk about, mm-hmm. and I was going to put it on here, but it's actually from. It's a caller from Infowars. Okay. Um, but I, uh, with Alex Jones, mm-hmm. and I didn't want to put it on here because once again, the yeah. communist YouTube. Yeah, yeah, I said it. Communist YouTube who mm-hmm. wants to censor what you say. Uh, soon our government will be doing it because we have the 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 disinformation governance board mm-hmm. by the Homeland Security starting to kick into action. Insane First Amendment being just. This, this country's being gutted from the inside out. Yep, the powerful AI. But, so I'll ask you a question. Um, mm-hmm. What, where do you think we are? Where do you think we are? Um, I know churches, and we're going to talk about this too, I know churches have stopped preaching 
prophecy. A mm. lot of churches have stopped preaching prophecy. Right. Um, some say that just it's too it's it's too uh, it's too hard to understand. Controversial. Mm. Controversial. Mm. And so and so they just they, they kind of they kind of stay away from it. and They don't want to touch it with a ten foot pole. Yeah. Um, but I can also understand. You know, so many people have said this before and been wrong. Mm. But if that's the case, why did God give us His the, the prophecy so that when we see the signs, that we don't at least talk about them? Right. Um, and and wh- where do you think we are, and where do you, what do you think the church should be doing right now? Yeah, that's a that's a broad question. <laughs> I know, but hey, but man, look, where, the camera's where, on you. Yeah, where we're at, we've got uh, every generation. This is where I've I've really come to understand. No matter what's going on in the world, our job, our what he's given us, the authority he's given us, and you go to uh, to Acts, um, the very first chapter of Acts, and he told us this is a very important too. Is that critical? Because I'm actually going to be expounding on this on uh, one of my next videos about what he told us. His final command when he he appeared many times after his resurrection, and he gave them this command, and they're all commands. He said it's not. They asked him. Uh, the disciples asked him, well, what, we need to know more about some of the signs. Uh, he said, it's not for you to know. It's only for the Father to know about signs and seasons. So uh, as far as earth, we're, we're covering earth here, our authority is here. So we've got to be all about doing his will on earth as it is in heaven. He said, it's for you, you go back to his original commands, to make disciples, to carry out his will on earth as it is in heaven. So where we're at is we need to get back to what he said. We we need to get back to making disciples, to to helping one another, to loving one another, and and begin to pull out of what this world's doing. Whatever systems that have been built, they're all about to fall. <laughs> well, do you think that? Yeah. Do you think that? Um, well, there's so many spots to cover here. We'll yeah. just dive into it. So. During tribulation, I've always the way I've always understood it is uh, there's going to be a great revival. There's yeah. going to be a great falling away, yes. but there's also going to be probably the biggest revival you've ever seen. Do you, do you agree with that? Yeah, it, there's because it's separating the wheat from the tares, right? And and people seeing that oh, this wasn't just a bunch of fairy tales, right? Now I think there's going to be a lot who are just they're too far gone. Yeah. You know they've trampled beneath their feet the blood of Christ too many times that they they can't find repentance if it bit them in the in in the knee. Yeah. yeah. But um, I think a lot of people who've kind of been on the fence. I've seen it myself. Mm-hmm. I've seen it myself. Um, yeah. People who you wouldn't expect starting to ask questions, mm-hmm. starting to um, open their hearts are being opened and, and turned soft towards these things while mm-hmm. other people's hearts are just growing colder and colder. Right. It's a, it, we have to have a love of the truth. And that means we got to understand the truth about us that we need to be real careful how we treat, you know, if we're really following, examine ourselves to see if we are of the faith. And so we can easily get our hearts hardened to that. Uh, the, the Lord himself, it says that, uh, in Second Thessalonians 2, that strong delusion goes on people because they don't have a love of the truth, the Father allows them to believe the lies. It's a hardness of their heart to reject the truth because it has, we have to have a soft heart. We have to continue to go through those griefs and suffer. You know, it's, it, it, it sucks to suffer. Uh, we're called to the fellowship of suffering, like Paul said. And what did he go through? <laughs> right. The, all the things he went through for us. But, he, he knew it was going to come to this generation. But bringing it back. To right, what we're doing what, with what, now. What I'm, what I'm saying is bringing yeah. it back to the, the, to the church teaching prophecy. Yeah. So if you do, if you do kind of go with that, that premise that, sure. you know, when people see these things and they kind, of have a, they kind of have a general knowledge of how things, how God right. said it was going to be. Right. It, it tor- closer towards, as we, as we get closer towards the return of our Savior. Mm-hmm. Um as we see these things mm-hmm. that we will see people start to the scales fall from their yeah, eyes yes. their hearts turning to god right. so why not teach prophecy right if especially now mm-hmm. okay cuz i i'm trying not to get hot here but yeah. it seems like churches are asleep yes and and i think we would be remiss 
as God's people to not address the issues. We're called to be a light in a dark in the darkness. We're called to be salt of the earth. And if we're not calling out the blasphemies, mm-hmm. the church is you know doing that. We just watched it. We right. just watched church after church after church, mm-hmm. and and we covered yeah. we covered prophetic. Pr- prophetic um, news, that, that, that's the stuff that, that that's happening that, that's prophesied right. in Scripture. Mm-hmm. Am I saying it's the end? Don't know. Um, w- am I saying we should be teaching it? Yes, one hundred percent. Do you? I mean, do you agree with that? Yeah, we shouldn't just be teaching it. We should be again doing what the Savior did. If the moment he stepped out on the street, he said, "Repent." He said, "Return to the kingdom," because they were all going the wrong way. They were literally on the broad road to destruction, and he was the light who knew the way. He is the way, right? And so he was pointing them. We should be doing the same thing to the churches and people around us. People who say that they believe need to hear us say that's wrong. Right. And this is right. And it, Thank you. Or, Amen. Or it'll get blurred. There's already a gray area right now, and it's about to get dark because they're going to be given the ability to, like they just said in the video, uh, you can do what you want. That Satan's, That's joy. Satan's will is, uh, I've seen videos of some of these other uh, Satan's children pawns that are on celebrities. You'll see some videos I've seen other people cover about they're wearing t-shirts to say do what thou will because that's what yeshua said to judas do what you're going to do because you're not not listening to me so (laughs) So they just totally took that verse and and, and put it on a shirt yeah and so this is their belief and they're these are the celebrities i call them the exalted ones because they call themselves stars and what did what did what was satan called the sun uh the morning right he was the star that fell from heaven so this is all the scripture right that the stars fell from heaven in uh in Re- Revelation, right? Uh, not Revelation. Yeah, it's in Revelation. Yeah. Talking about the dragon who tor- took, took a the, third. There you rhythm, go. Dragon was thrown out. Right. And that, that's what's who's running the, sh- uh, the show, as it were, right now. The show media. I always go back to that. We, we talk about the masses of the media. They're not exalting Christ. So if they're not exalting Christ, they're antichrist. That's the spirit of the antichrist Paul was talking about. If they would have had the news back then and video, they would have been using it back then. If they're using anything they can to spread their gospel of hate and contempt. Right. Yeah. And see, like you were saying, um, so we controversial. Gotta... You also used that word controversial. Right. Um, meaning, I think a lot of churches don't want to teach prophecy because of how specific it gets. Yes. You know, it mentions, it, it, it mentions a, a, a list of of sins and normal behaviors that yeah. that that will be going on during that time, and and, mm-hmm. and you're gonna rustle some feathers. You're yeah. going to offend. The word of God offends. Cutting, what does it say? Cutting to the deep, deepest and marrow, marrows of the of the of soul the heart, spirit. soul and spirit. Yeah. I mean, it's going to offend. If it doesn't offend, I think we're preaching it wrong. I mean, if if right. if, if, if somebody is not getting convicted in the congregation. We, we are preaching it wrong. Even believers should be convicted because, look, we, we, don't, we don't live perfect lives. That's why people go to sins because they're not convicted of it and they fall away. We have to continually hear, hey, uh, look, you're That's going wrong. the wrong way. Yeah, yeah, repent. Like, brother, sister, this is wrong. Paul said, my brothers, this should not be so. They were already trying to f- go off. Satan's always trying to lead us away, right? Because we're the sheep. We're, we don't know how to uh, all things in the Spirit. We're learning of the Spirit as we're coming back to the Father to keep us safe under the Son's wings, right? Under, under our Savior. So He wants us all to do that. And I, I go back and I remember seeing these scenes in movies and reading the Scriptures. Uh, uh, Yeshua was looking out over the con- over Jerusalem and He wept. He broke down crying. Right. He said, how often I want to gather you together. Because He knew the, fa- he's, the Father and Him are one. He wants us all to stay safe. He said, but you wouldn't let me. Yeah. That's a huge Scripture. You wouldn't let me. That we have the opportunity to 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 obey him and to stay under his safety, or we're going to be seduced away by the enemy. So it's it's up to us. So we got so we got prophecy probably not being taught because it's controversial. We don't want to rustle no feathers. We don't want to hurt nobody's feelings. Prophecy not being taught because um, I've heard it's hard to understand, which I get, yeah. I get, but it's it's not impossible to understand. By any stretch of the imagination, I mean, you know, God wouldn't have put it there if it's Revelation is the only book in the Bible that comes with that comes with a blessing to the one who reads it and and, and hears. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's the only book of the Bible that comes with a blessing for that for for the one who reads. Um, but yet we, we don't we don't want to 
pass that blessing on to the to, to God's flock, I guess. I mean, mm-hmm. I don't know. I can understand there's been a bunch of kooks in the past, you know, who who sell their belongings and dress in robes mm-hmm. and stay on rooftops because their their leader said that today's the day that their the Messiah is coming and then it came and gone and even mm-hmm. though Jesus said no man nobody knows the day or the hour, mm-hmm. you know, they still think they can guess the day or the hour. I get that. Mm-hmm. And you don't want to like and I don't think on my channel I've ever said, you know, dogmatically, this is it, y'all, you know, you know, hide your kids, hide your wife. Any minute now. Yeah, yeah, yeah no. Yeah. Um, <laughs> my point is, we, we, you know, we should be teaching it mm-hmm. and not dogmatically, and let the congregation, yeah. excuse me, let the congregation come to their own conclusion. You know what I mean? Yeah. Does well, that make sense? It says two through witnesses. Uh, if we agree on it, it's established. So if we, we two two people agree, then we can share it with other people. And if we all have to come to a place of agreement, there's so many 55,000 denominations worldwide for, yeah. that we say we believe in the same God. That means they're they're varying. That has It's going to take work for each person to be willing to be approached and, uh, and really humble themselves. Each of us humble ourselves to listen to what our brothers and sisters have to say, specifically brother to brother and sister to sister. So we've got to come to a place where we, we need to repent. You know, like repent is just returning back to the original uh, way. Follow what Yeshua said. He's the master. He said, follow me. Right? He's the one who has the words of life. All right. So we keep going back to him. We have to find out who's not doing that. Or they have to be found out by where they, if they continue to harden their hearts, they'll suffer the destruction. You know, um, destruction is going to come. A revelation: the whole world is going to feel the, the effects of all the, uh, all the, um, yeah, all the, the the pangs that are going to happen on the earth. All the terrible things, you know, the wraths. You know, the, the trumpets are going to be ten times worse than the seals. Well, yeah, the seals are just rem- letting are us just... know that again. That's the time clock. Obviously, we know this. It's it's letting us know how close we are to the trumpets. Because when the trumpets happen, it's just to sort everybody out. That's what all this is. Who's going to come back to the the Father? Who's going to repent? Who's going to do what he said? So, And you got to be discerning. Guys, that's, yeah. that's, that's one of the reasons why I think prophecy needs to be taught, that we need to be talking about this. Yep. we got to be discerning. Even Jesus said those days are shortened lest even the elect be deceived. Right. You know, that no flesh would be saved. It's that bad. Um, I, and, and if we're not, if we're, if we're not knowledgeable of the Scriptures, there's no way we can be discerning. Like, like, you know, w- w- when the mark finally does come, mm-hmm. if if we're if, if the church is still here, how are you going to know to either you know to stand on the the word and be like I will not take that, right. or yeah. or you just be duped by the enemy and, and you know you're not even thinking twice about it. You're just like yeah, this is just society how it is now. This is how I pay for my groceries. It's 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 my mm-hmm. little chip in my hand. This is how I connect to the internet. It's just right. a little chip in my hand. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, Elon Musk talking about Neuralink, wanting to roll Neuralink out, you know, chip in your head so you can yeah. you can communicate with the digital world. It's like, that's a big no for yeah. me. Yeah. Why? Because I know what scripture says. Yep. And that's why I think we need to be talking about these things. You know how many Christians might take that mm-hmm. if they think, if, if they don't know? Yeah, yeah many. That's why, and, and, the, and that's, that's just why it bugs me that, that we, that so many churches don't want to talk about it. I mean... It's not like you got to sit up on, on, on your on your um behind your pulpit and, and and scream that we are in the end times. Yeah, dwell on it. Yeah. Th- then I, I'd be like, hey, uh, can we have a, you know, let's have a little talk because right. I don't know, but but let's teach it. Yeah. Let's at least teach it yeah, and let the Holy Spirit and each individual believer yep. guide them to to apply it, or at yeah. least at least arm them with the discernment needed to understand as we live in these times yeah understand where we're at what we need to do and not be frantic when these things start to happen right we have to be ready ahead of time and we have to warn others because we've been warned now speaking of that yeah not to interrupt you sorry but i've been wanting to get to this so speaking of that i used to i used to live kind of like a little fatalistic mindset right like well this is it there ain't nothing i can do right it's it's preordained it's prophesied it's um, nothing I can do about it. That's part of it, yeah. Right. So, yep. so I, I um, but now I, I've kind of moved on towards a. Uh, what do I need to be doing right now? It's, this, this, it's looking nasty out there, and and I'm working a nine to five. You know, so exactly. like I want to be doing something and plucking brands from the fire. 
Yeah. And me and you kind of ha- ha- had a good experience with that re- recently. Yes. Praise God. All, all glory to God for that. Yep. Um, and I want more of that. Yeah. They're As, hungry and thirsty for righteousness right there. That's that's why. That's what, that's where, making that's what, disciples. That's what gives gives you fuel. That's what gives you like the, the, the initiative and just gives you the the ex- exhortation where it's a ex- exhortation encouraging one another by by witnessing that's a witness like wherever we go if we two brothers witness to uh, one or two or more other brothers and you're doing we're, we're witnessing a, with the truth that cannot be overthrown ever then it will find it's it'll find if there's any darkness or shadow of turning in that person who doesn't understand what we understand then we will have witnessed and won a brother back over or a sister, you know? And so that's, that's the joy of, of bearing the cross because who else is doing that? Few, there are people who are doing that, of course, all over the world, but this is our witness. And it's for anyone who, who listens and understands, we don't need to sit on our hands. There's, there's so much work to do. We've got, we're surrounded by witnesses. This is such, since we're surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, and that means crowd, people all around us. You can go out to any event, and there are tens of thousands of people on average that, that go come and go to these different events, uh, wherever you're going. But it, it it's better when it's people you that God, our, our Father, presents to us. These are works prepared for us in advance. We literally have that we should walk in. Right, we should walk in and, and not shrink back from and sit down. Okay, it's sitting down is the ones who said we did all these things, but we were we were chilling too much. Uh, when there's another person to reach. And sometimes that's just a phone call. Sometimes, well, now we can do Zoom. You can do all kinds of things to communicate with people. We just That's what we just did. These, yeah. br- these brothers wouldn't show up, and they that was their, their uh, they weren't comfortable. So we were like, okay, we're going to do whatever. So we Let's use the technology on. that this, the enemy uses so often. This, we used it for God. So we, yeah, we used it for good. Like what we're doing right now. Right, witnessing. And that's the, the joy and the, 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 uh, the pr- privilege we have to be able to use this technology. Um, uh, when I understood that you can upload videos on YouTube, I thought, what am I going to do? <laughs> I'm like, okay, there's nothing else for me to do except preach the gospel and except for communicate what's been revealed to me. Like the Lord told us, shout it from the rooftops. And this is the way to do it. And then, of course, city streets. And when people go on city streets, people pay attention. Now, I can I can bear witness to that because they're like, what are you here for? Well, you're not here entertaining, dancing, making a song. There's all kinds of things people do publicly. But when we go publicly, that's our light shining because who else does that? Disciples do. Uh, they're, right. that, this, what we just saw in that video, now they're starting to copy us. They're doing it publicly with megaphones. So they're, they're, they're seeing that we're doing it and darkness is going to rise up and do the same thing. But what's, why are we here? Why are we saved? Why are we disciples? To follow him and do what he commanded us to do, to preach the gospel, to make disciples. All right. No, well said. Well said. Um, <laughs> it's a lot to think about. I mean, yeah. I mean, that's the number one. I mean, I mean, that's the number one. The church, you know, he even said, you know, you know, go into all nations, preaching, pre- preach the gospel, and baptizing people into the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And then I believe it's Acts chapter one. He says, "Go and make disciples." Right. A disciple is a learner. That's all. That's all that is. Somebody who's in the learning process. We're always in the learning process. If if, if you call mm-hmm. yourself by the by the blood of Yeshua, you are a disciple. We are constantly learning. Right. Um, and I mean, b- back to the prophecy subject. That that's mm-hmm. that's just my point. My my, my oh. point is, but, but yes. Yes, we, we want to pluck brands from the fire. We, we want to preach the, 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 the gospel of Christ. But it goes further than that. Mm-hmm. After our salvation, we're constantly being discipled by other brothers, by the Spirit. And, and I just would hate to see um, the, the, the pe- people getting lulled into a, into a sense of um, complacency. Yeah. You know, like, I'll just wait on the rapture. And that, that's where my next question, question was going to be asked uh, for you. Because, mm-hmm. you know, you mentioned the seals. Right. You mentioned, uh, you know, and it almost sounds like you think they're getting broken right now. Yeah. Um, I believe they are. And, uh, mm-hmm. and, and, and if that's the case, then, then that's the case. Uh, my question would be, what do you, do you believe in the rapture? Mm-hmm. You know what do you what, what do you believe the rapture is? Do you believe in, in in do you believe it's a biblical doctrine, or do you think it's something that that was made up in the early 1900s? Uh, hmm. 
you know, where do you sit on the rapture? Oh, wow. Uh, that That's one of those, where do I begin? And, oh, uh, you're going to, no, you're going to have to keep it. <laughs> and, and, and don't get me started. Uh, I'll, I'll, the short, I'll give the short version because I've done videos on this where I've kind of, uh, like about, about, I think I did about an hour and a half or so on uh, Disciples Heart yes, YouTube channel on, <laughs> on the uh, on the the last trumpet. Okay, the last trumpet. It's in uh, uh, in Matthew twenty four twenty four, I believe, and it's uh, at the final trumpet, the final blast, which the Lord of the angel, of the Lord Himself, blasts, is when when uh, that comes at the the close of the the trumpets okay so you're revelation. talking about the trumpet judgments yeah trumpet okay. and revelation so we're, we're going to go through a lot of stuff we're going to endure and you read revelation 11 revelation 12 it says um that uh, that uh they they overcame him satan by the blood of the lamb and all of his schemes that are going on right now right uh, they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and the word of their testimony because they were not afraid to die there was no fear of death in any of us so you look at the disciples. What, what was that? What, they were following the Savior. They weren't afraid to die. So, the trumpets, and the the final trumpet, from what I, I do understand, are very very clear. And you read the scriptures, and you go back and forth between Revelation and the uh, and uh, what our Savior said that it'll be at the final blast. Then the dead in Christ will rise. And those that remain will be caught up. In the spirit, because there's going to be so much stuff going on uh, at that point in time, not too long from now. Uh, we don't know the day or the hour, obviously, but it's going to be increasingly so. We're going to we're going to know little by little as we go forward here just how close we are. But we will be going through, as he said, we'll be going through a tribulation. We'll be going through the sorrows, which we're we're, we're entering the sorrows, but we'll be going through the tribulation, which is the uh, it's the uh, the trumpets. Those are, he said. Will it, when the last days will there be will there be faith on the earth? We're really going to be believing him even to the point of death. Right. We can't be afraid of de dying. You know, like Paul said, you can't really live until you know to die is gain. We're gonna. That's, I've told uh, others. I've told this to my children uh, that we're all going to one day. The best one is dying for the cause of Christ. I've I've told them clearly. I said if if when I go. The best death that I could die, like many people die for, for their, their country, that's their cause, and it's a good cause, but the greatest cause is the cause of Christ. To die in his name for his glory and to be persecuted, he says it's great when we're persecuted for his name's sake. So that has to do, what, why else, uh, how much courage and how much of the Holy Spirit do we have indwelling in us when we're afraid to go out and preach on the street? Well, yeah, and 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 that's the, that is the that that is the the exactly what jesus meant when he said P carrying pick up your cross and following me is, right. that means uh, to the point to death right i mean when he said that to the disciples they knew exactly what he meant you know you carry your cross yeah. to to your death yeah. and and it's exactly what he meant and you, yeah that's 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 Being the most honorable honorable death i yeah. mean to to be persecuted he, jesus said blessed are you when people persecute you I think it hit that one's the one that for yours is the kingdom of God. Right. I believe. Yes. Don't quote me on that, yeah, but but um, that's one of the beatitudes. Right. That's it. It was at the Sermon on the Mount. Yes. And he said uh, uh, that don't be surprised when people hate you because of me. Right. So if they're they hating you, me, they're gonna hate you uh, because we're representing light, and others who don't know it are representing darkness. That's the deception. That's so. That's we have to understand that. So you so so when it comes to the rapture, yeah. you you kind of you kind of lean towards the last trumpet as right. a, as a um, as a literal what the and, and and when it comes to it, the last trumpet. Mm -hmm. Oh wait, that's the last seal. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I'm in Revelation. Did you know? No, there's no women in heaven. Yeah, we are we are in spirit. No, there's no no women in heaven. Right, there's no need for women. There's, we're no, all... it says right here, when he opened the seventh seal, there was silence in heaven for about half an hour. Mm -hmm. There's no women. I just can't. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. No, yeah, that was the last seal. No, yeah. here's the seventh trumpet. And, the and, trumpet. And, <laughs> You're going to get some hate now. <laughs> here we go. It was a joke. Please don't storm the stage. I'm not mm -hmm. Dave Chappelle.
Well, yeah, look. <laughs> Chris Rock. I'm leave, not Chris Rock. It leave, was a joke. Leave it up to them. Yeah. Don't cancel me. Yeah, send all mail there. I don't want. To. <laughs> <Go down. laughs> no, but yeah, I, I tend to lean the same the same direction. Why? And what I find really interesting is um, in Revelation 12 or Revelation 11. <laughs> you're still laughing. <laughs> no, nah, just. Once you get going, you know. Uh, the seventh angel sounded, and there were loud voices in heaven saying, Oh, but never mind. Then there there's loud voices. <laughs> <laughs> so there is. There are women in heaven. No, I'm just kidding. It's a joke, man. I'm going to get so much, like, it's all good. I'm going to get hit by the sisters at church on Sunday. Yep. Um, anyways, the kingdoms of, the, of this world have become the kingdoms of our Lord and his Christ. This is when the seventh angel sounded mm-hmm. the, the trumpet. And he shall reign forever and ever. And the twenty-four elders who sat before God on the thrones fell on their faces and worshipped God, saying, We give thanks to you, O Lord, God Almighty, the one who is and was and who is to come. And they go on with their praise. But then verse 19, right before chapter 12, Mm -hmm. it says, And then the temple of God was opened Mm -hmm. in heaven, and the ark of his covenant was seen in his temple. It was seen. The temple of God was opened. The Ark of the Covenant is now seen, and there were lightnings, noises, thunderings, and earthquakes, and, and great hell. Mm. When I read that, I'm like, that is the rapture. The temple of God in heaven opening up. Mm-hmm. I don't know. That's just, it, 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 this is, like I've heard pastors say, yeah. it, it's conjecture. Yes, yeah, sure. sure. We can have disagreements, but but um, th- th- what we're talking about is there's no way we can be dogmatic one way or the other. Hmm. Um, I can tell you in one of my videos, I did disprove the fact that the rapture does not come after the tribulation. That's impossible. That would negate Isaiah 65. Hmm. It would contradict, you know, the fact that there will be living people, living, breathing people, having children, dying in the kingdom, in the millennial kingdom. Yeah. They will be alive. They will be having babies. It says to die at 100 is to die as a child. Hmm. There is going to be death. And there, believe it or not, there will still be sin when Jesus is here on the earth or if there wasn't when when satan's let back out there would be no way to deceive the people sin Mm. will exist it'll be dealt with swiftly quickly by our lord yeshua Mm. because you will rule with an iron rod there was no sin there would be no reason to rule with a rod but all that aside that would negate isaiah 65 if the tribulation came after i mean if uh, the rapture came after tribulation i've heard Mm. so many people say that no no the rapture you know it's it's just the resurrection right and it happens after tribulation no because if it happened after tribulation before the millennial kingdom everybody would be raptured and there wouldn't be no living people to enter the kingdom right and we don't negate we don't contradict god's word does not contradict Mm. so i've always leaned towards the same thing Sure. that rapture to me pre-trip i mean i mean mid-trip okay a lot of pastors, uh, I mean, I, and, and I see where they come from, the, the pastors that teach pre-trib, you know, which mm-hmm. I think it puts a lot of complacency, right back, bringing it right back around to where I was, That's exactly what, what we were talking about. Yep. Um, I think we got a lot of um, complacent mindsets yeah. when it comes to, like, Mm-hmm. End time prophecy because people think, well, I'll I'll be raptured before it even happens, so so I don't want to learn about it, I don't want to teach about it, I don't, mm-hmm. and I think that's kind of har- harmful to the church. It is, and, and it's that uh, it comes down to the increase of knowledge. A whole bunch of people have all kinds of opinions and different views, and if somebody's got a bigger mic, then that <laughs> that message can spread. Like if you right. get, if you can start if you can film a movie about it, you know, there's been movie series about it, a book series about everybody's getting out here before anything bad happens. Well, it's already bad. <laughs> right. And it's going to get worse. And now, it could... Sorry, go ahead. No, no. It's just... We're going to get... <laughs> so here you go. We're going to get um, to a point where nobody wants to want to be here. Uh, even the evil are going to say, throw the uh, rocks fall on us. You know, that's that's what's going to happen. Hide us from the face of the Lord. Right, the wrath of the throne. Lamb. Wrath of the Lamb's coming down. Oh, wait a minute. This is actually happening like they told us and warned us about. And then they continue to curse him. And then they... Because that's, that's who they belong to. It's there's children of God and there's children of Satan. They're all over the earth. So and there's more children, uh, Satan's children. That's why we have so many systems that are wrong. <laughs> God help us all. Yeah, they're built up. So, but back to the the bottom line is, um, there's so many different viewpoints, so many different uh, publications and and writings about it. And once a book has been published, so I'm careful. I'm like, you know what? I don't think I'll ever publish a book, for that very reason. That's the only one we need to go to. Now, now other people can publish yeah. books about. You know instructions or you know whatever whatever they want to uh, do if but if it's about the bible and it's about the scriptures 
we should be real careful to say dogmatically this is how it is right it we, we yeah can, we're publishing it now by by recording it online uh but and it is written everything we're doing is witnessed and testified and we'll give account for so we have to be real careful what we do in word or deed but we should be real careful t- telling anyone it's on this day or this hour or this minute and it's going to happen now or then we just need to be about preaching, well, foolish. Pre- preaching the gospel right Right. It's not our business. I mean, uh, to be honest with you, that was the last thing the Lord said because He knew that we'd be arguing about it. They were arguing about stuff then. Right. And they weren't going. They would be like, can you imagine if Paul was living today, he would he would be freaking out. But what, Paul was one of the ones who said, "I have I have taught you the full counsel of God." Right. He didn't say partial. Everything he knew. Yes. Yeah. Everything he knew at the time. Right. He he, he labored day and night. Yeah. Among you, I labor day and night among yeah. you to, 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 to preach to you the full counsel of God. Until the, his last breath. Yep. So I'm just, I mean, I agree with you. Yeah. We should be teaching. The gospel is number one above and above and foremost. Right. But we need to know how close we but are. But once we start discipling, right. we need to teach the full counsel yeah, of God. Yeah. And I don't see anything wrong with teaching Daniel. No, I don't I, see anything wrong with I teaching agree. Revelation. I agree. that That's why we should, because it points back to him. Right. At all points back to, well, we need to be talking Every, about it because when we do, then that'll be more of a hunger and thirst for righteousness to yes. do it the right way. If we don't, if there's no wrath and there's no there's no tribulation to go through, there's no fear of God. We need to know there's consequences for a world, for, for the most part, that's doing the evil things they're doing now. And they're going to continue to do. So we need to say, get out of that. Get away from that worldly system and be ready and prepare this generation and every generation, if any, past this. Because the generations will continue on, but I'm talking for every generation. Every generation needs to know, teach it all. And don't ignore what's about to happen and what is happening. Yeah. We, we don't can, be afraid to speak out. We could sing songs all day long and we should praise Him. Yeah. But we need to be talking about the hard stuff with those who are ready for the meat. Being wise as serpents. Right. And as harmless as doves. Exactly. And and if you were to go through the book of Revelation like in a church setting and, and teach it verse by verse and just teach it. You right. don't have to be you don't have to give your own opinion on whether we are or not right. in, in in the times. That's not once again, like I said, that's for the Holy Spirit to to, to, yeah, to speak in every yeah. individual. You yeah. know what I'm saying? And but I mean, because no man knows the day or the hour. But if you were teaching Revelation, every single message, every single sermon, at the end of it is, is nothing but a a a invitation to accept Christ. Right, to if repent. you taught yeah. the twenty two chapters of Revelation, yep. you could, if you could even possibly end the sermon without an invitation to Christ. Mm-hmm. You're not teaching Revelation exactly because Revelation is all about. Christ, mm-hmm. Christ glorified, yep. Christ is bringing justice, mm-hmm. Christ setting it right. That's right. I mean, a- a- every sermon would be an invitation to come to the Lord's table. And if you look at and, Revelation. And know the Lord, Yeshua. Every bit of it is. If you read uh, the each chapter, like you're saying, and, and all the emphasis on why we need to turn back to Him, it's all saying, point direct <laughs> right back to Him. And to repent, and it, the ones who hear repent, it repent, repent, repent. It says it over. And the, over. the ones who don't, and they harden their hearts. They don't repent. The, and it says there's several scriptures where it says that. And even after the wrath, they still didn't repent. Even after Babylon falls, they still don't repent. So, and again, repent means to come back to the narrow way, to follow the Savior, the only one. Nice, <laughs> nice. Well, you got anything you want to add before we wrap this up? Oh, um, anything not, at all? Yeah, I just I'm gonna point anybody who uh, hears this on my channel, just get it out of the way here now. That um, that subscribe to his channel. I want him to grow. I want everybody to see his witness that's on this channel, and uh, make sure you engage in his channel. If y'all don't are aware of this, uh, as much talking we're doing on other channels, I see some channels that are like. Um, have to have thousands of thousands of subscribers and there's a lot of engagement if if you're listening leave a comment below this video and any videos that i upload his video obviously and uh and then share it people need to hear this this is what's not being talked about and the reason why it's not being talked about is because the uh, people are are not hearing it they're not hearing this witness 
that every every church, every congregation, every believer needs to hear these things. So make sure that you share it. If you can't communicate this, we have the ability to communicate it here today so you can share this with others to start that conversation. Awesome, man. Hey, uh, thanks for coming in again. Yeah. I mean, what you guys don't realize is, is we have these conversations quite regularly and we've yeah. just it, we've just been trying to get let the stars align so to speak and, yeah. you know letting god get us both in the same room in front of cameras to like just have these conversations with you guys yeah. um this is just the tip of the iceberg mm-hmm. i mean he, he, he very possibly could be back next week who knows but go to his channel check it out once again it's the disciples heart and um the uh Thank you all for joining us today. Once again, subscribe if you haven't. Hit the bell and like and share. Get it out there so that, you know, you can get God's word out there. That's kind of that's kind of the whole point of everything we do here. Bring glory to God and True. Yeshua and however we can. Spread the gospel. Spread the news. Um, that's what we're here for. So, hey, man, once again, thank you. Thank you got you. it, man. Thanks for having me. It was awesome. And like always, guys, keep your head on a swivel. Be discerning and... Remember, whether you eat or drink, do it all to the glory of God. I'm out. See you next time.